they have to do hard manual labor or work their way up a corporate ladder. But women don't have to do that, can capitalize off of our looks and make an amazing living. And halfway through that year, they assigned me this black lady. But it had absolutely nothing to do with her being black. She was just a bad leader. Oh, what's up? You, you want to go for who got the worst baby daddy? Within a week, I was pregnant. It ended up being an STD that he gave me. Bacanas has Bacanas. You guys love That's Columbia. Oh, don't go to Columbia. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Mortal Life. Before I get into this video, I ask that you like, comment, subscribe. Also, smash that notification bell just to be sure you get on my videos as soon as I release them. Let's get right into this. Men are so jealous of women, especially beautiful women. And the root of all of that anger and all of that jealousy is the patriarchy, which is, guess what, set up by men. The reality is, is that men are expected to wake up early every single day and go to work and get a paycheck and pay for bills, not only for themselves, but for their wives, their girlfriends, any future kids they might have. They have to do hard manual labor or work their way up a corporate ladder. But women don't have to do that. And it makes y'all so upset that girls like me or other beautiful girls can capitalize off of our looks and make an amazing living. It's delusional. And I'm not saying at all that just because a girl is pretty, she doesn't have to work hard. Or she might be, I'm telling you y'all, she may very well be an OnlyFans model. Talking like this. I'm telling you y'all, don't sleep. This woman is probably an OnlyFans model. No, only plans. OnlyFans means no plans. OnlyFans, no plans. Oh, wow. That's a good one. But yeah, I'm telling y'all. Or she isn't a hard worker. If anything, you kind of have to work a little bit harder to get over the bias of being pretty. But there's no denying that there are so many life advantages to being attractive. This goes for men and women, but for whatever reason, it makes men so upset. The fact that I make the money that I do and I have the lifestyle that I have because of my looks and what I post on social media really upsets y'all. The delusions because y'all wish y'all had it this easy and y'all don't so you're angry i get it this woman is full of herself but this day and age right woman thinks she's pretty she feels like her looks will last forever for you to even say something like that and talk like that like what goal do you have like who do you think you are why are you so full of yourself that was the most disgusting maybe it's a disgusting statement but from the way it was put out there and it was from you it's worse that you do look good that you're saying that. It's, you know how they, that's a nick. To guys, that's a nick. It's like, oh. And then guy will see you in person and go, oh, this woman have no idea. You're not attractive. From you acting like that, you're not attractive. I'd rather take a Filipina, well, my wife, of course, but still, a guy, a guy would rather take a Filipina that will feel she's a five and it'll look better than her. Yes, it's like that. Nobody in this world is less of a girl's girl than your older manager who's dissatisfied with her life. One of the absolute worst mean girl bullies that I ever had in my entire career was when I worked in the beauty industry and I had a new DM come in and she was older and you could tell... I have no problem with any of these things, but I could tell that she was so dissatisfied with herself. She was an extremely tall, not extremely tall, she was just much taller than me, broader than me. Um, she was at least 25 years older than me and she was constantly getting work done like getting her neck tucked like doing all these things and she was what we would call nicety nicety is when you are actually being nasty but you smile and it comes off as you're you're being nice like you look you look nice but there's this just venom and undertone to what you're saying and she was constantly like this she absolutely steamrolled me and i mean in the worst bullying kind of way she was extremely threatening um she pulled me into her office one time and actually sat her chair in front of the door facing me and was pointing at me as she was talking to me and at this point i mean i was in my mid-20s you know i had already been in work for 10 years by now and um, just absolutely no reason to be speaking to me like that but it was it, it was like if corporate had seen her that would not have gone over well like she was insane but in the beauty industry in particular you have so many people that are focused on how they look and the beauty world and all this so when you have people in leadership especially these mean girl types 
that can get away with this stuff secretly, like pulling people into offices where they can bully, it is, it's just another level of volatile and, and toxic because they, they're in this beauty industry, they're focused on beauty. And so you've got this level of like, being a woman that hates younger women or hates other women and is threatened by them but then you know they're in a leadership role where they can control the narrative and they can control the trajectory of your career by how they talk about you in circles of other higher ups um, but they have that authority that they can just march into your office or your store and pull you into a back room and speak to you so poorly but they know so many other people that there's nothing you can do about it. No one's going to believe you. She was so scary, like legitimately scary. And now she's apparently some kind of like life coach or something. She like trains people in how to be like happier and fulfilled with their life. Sound like that woman is, <laughs> is a boss. That's how a boss is supposed to act. Why would she be like upset? She's supposed to smile. I mean, I don't know. I don't get it. To me, it sounds like a bunch of complaining. I get what she's saying, but at the same time, I don't get what she's saying. Now, I was waiting for her to say, you know, the woman was nice, but then she hit me one time. Like, you're not getting hit, smacked, or punched. That's just me. I I'm, I'm most likely wrong. That's how I feel. I'm ready to tell my story, y'all. Surviving a black manager. I ain't never endured the kind of mental anguish and frustration i have endured the last 190 days oh god i feel like i could just breathe stretch shake let it go breathe stretch shake let it go now i've been on this job for like over a year and halfway through that year they assigned me this black lady initially i was like okay cool but then i seen how she got down Y'all, I have been called every word but a child of God under her leadership. My mental health could take it. But I promised my husband I was not going to quit. Mm -hmm. I upheld my end of the deal. Uh. All right. So you see more female managers. Uh, I figured it out. Women can't stand each other. You see it already with, with the lesbians. They're more violent than regular relationships. You can see here more black women and also white women, women having problems with female managers, they just can't stand each other. They see each other, they run each other, they don't like certain things. Maybe the manager is getting on them missing, I don't know, getting on them missing more work. Hey, Tyrone is putting in more days, I don't know what it is, but it's an issue. Women got problems with each other. Especially black women that have a black female supervisor. But you would think, okay, it's a black woman that's in management, she gonna help me out, she gonna let me know the ropes, the end. I love conversations like this because it gives us an opportunity to educate and share ideas and thoughts behind um, presumptions. So as a former leader, uh, obviously a black female leader, <laughs> um, I've worked at all levels of leadership. So I've been a frontline supervisor, I've been middle management, and um, I've also led a large team as a VP just before I retired a few years ago. And quite frankly, one of my worst managers when I was an employee was not a black woman, it was a white woman. Now, don't get me wrong. I had a one black female <clears throat> manager when I was in middle management and she was horrible. She was really, really an ineffective leader. And I talked about ineffective leaders in another video. But it had absolutely nothing to do with her being black. She was just a bad leader. And what made her a bad leader is that she was afraid to make decisions and, and ran from confrontation. So the program that I was working in at the time was in shambles. So there was no order and there was no um, effective leadership. And so I use these examples because um, when I became, I'm going to use the VP as an example because that was the highest level that I attained. And with that comes a huge amount of responsibility. And then if you're um, a woman of color, in addition to that comes a huge amount of pressure because in the industry that I worked in, there was a lot of um, quote unquote competition to meet quotas. And, and I was over a whole program. So these, um, 
statistics were always measured by who's over which program. So as a black female, obviously you're going to stand out because there was only one of me. But here's the rub. Um, I made myself so available and I was a very effective leader to mentor not just women of color, but all women. And they came to me in droves. And what I wanted to do with these women, um, black women, other women of color, brown women, um, women in general that just wanted to pick my brain, understand how I got there, what it, what do they need to do, where are their strengths, where are their weaknesses. I made myself so available. I became um, a known mentor in the organization that I worked in. All right. So she's talking a lot, but how she's coming across, she comes across like someone who has some understanding, right? All of the other women were just, yeah, oh, I hate her. I don't like her. I don't like her. But her, when she broke down how the other managers she had was scared to make decisions, that's when I started listening. She explained why she was a bad manager. She explained the decisions she made. She didn't come off her emotions or how she felt. She made me listen. She comes across like a person of authority and like she knows what she's doing. It was night and day from the other woman. But let me get into this next video. I'm finna take my hair down. What's up? You you wanna go for who got the worst baby daddy? I'm gonna be exposing myself, but this is my time to shine. This trend was made for me. I was 19, young, dumb, vulnerable, you name it. I met this 25 year old. He was in the military. He had these other kids. He convinced me that he didn't see them because he wasn't allowed to travel a certain distance um, to go see them. And since they lived in Missouri and he lived in DC, he told me that he could only see them at certain points. I asked him what he wanted to get them for Christmas. He said, child support is their gift. Again, I was not super smart. I was 19. I didn't. This man begged me to get pregnant, begged me to get pregnant. He promised me a life. He promised me a family. He promised me a ring. He promised me marriage, a house, you name it, the whole nine. I said, okay, sounds fine. I've never heard this from a man. Must be real, right? So I get my birth control taken out. I know that was stupid. Bear with me. Within a week, I was pregnant. He then proceeds to ask me, well, why would you get pregnant? I'm sorry, what? I didn't get pregnant on my own. You were actually there too. Then I was having some complications. They thought that I was leaking uh, amniotic fluid when I was around 12 weeks. So I had to get all these extra scans and whatnot. Um, all of these doctors were consulting with each other and they were like, I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure why you're leaking amniotic fluid. Uh, anyways, they told me that I was gonna have to get a DNC and that I would likely miscarry over the weekend. I was obviously distraught. This was my first and only pregnancy. Uh, and he said, it's not that big of a deal. We can just make another one. Uh, anyways, it ended up being an STD that he gave me that was causing me to leak fluid from my cervix. Um, and yeah, because he was cheating on me the whole time we were together. I was super sick when I was pregnant. I had hyperemesis gravidarum, which causes um, constant vomiting. Uh, I would vomit around 20 to 30 times a day, every day for three months, two months, whatever. I was in the hospital once or twice a week. One of the times I had to be admitted into the hospital in the antepartum unit. He did not come with me to any of the hospital visits. Uh, I think he came to one doctor's appointment. He told me that he was not working, but that he would not be coming to the hospital. This is a wild story. But it's one of those situations where you can tell certain things were missing. You can tell from the way she believed that. And she went with everything that he told her. She didn't have a mentor. And by mentor, mentor, I mean a father. Why would you be going for that? Now, common sense. She didn't have it, right? When a, when a guy says, oh, yeah, the child support is their gift. It's not a gift. That's common sense. That's child support. That's supposed to be given anyway. But other women will listen to this. And, and this is a big trend right now. Oh, yeah. No. And then another woman. Oh, no. That was nothing. Let me tell you what my baby daddy did to me. That's usually my line. All it is is a men bash. 
Yeah, we know you had some bad guys. But what do guys always say? Choose better. Asian girl. White boy. Bacanas has Bacanas. All right, so now that's the thing now. You guys already know, right? White guys, black guys, but mostly white guys have taken over. Asian women want to give a white guy. I'm talking about everywhere. Every country is like that, right? Now you have in Japan, Korea, they want black guys. You know, black guys are getting in there too, but white guys a lot of I mean, Asian guys a lot of time have no chance with their own woman. Unless they're like from the country, but you guys get what I'm saying. And when it comes to the US, no chance. So, what are these Asian guys to do in the West? This is what Asian guys are doing. Take a look at this. Asian guys love Latinas. Yeah. Oh, don't go to Colombia. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> One of my YouTube friends, he like moved to Colombia, like one way ticket from LA to Colombia. And he actually was like a reformed Christian, got married, but then they ended up getting a divorce. Long story short, basically, this girl was church. She was like super religious. They kind of had like a church father. And then he was meddling with the relationship. Like she was conservative. He didn't like that. So then he tried to like talk with her about it, but then it like exploded and then he got death threats from the church dad. I think that's a trend nowadays. I, I have a lot of friends that are going to Colombia just for like the Colombian girls, oh, yeah. like yeah. Asian guy friends yeah. in a Colombia. To, like, oh, yeah, like, they're all like, Asian guys love that's Colombia. That's the thing. That's the thing. They that's love the thing now. Like, and that's wow, like Asian guys love Latinas. So, what are they gonna do? They're flying to Colombia and flocks. Asian guys are flying and flocks and getting the woman they want. And these Colombian women aren't tiny old things like a lot of these Asian women are. You know, these Colombian women are some big body, gorgeous. So, I see, you, I see why the Asian guys love them, of course. Big body, beautiful woman, and they're going out there to get them because they're being left by the wayside. They got to get in where they fit in, right? I get it. I respect it. I understand and I respect it. They're doing what they need to do. And why would they not? Because they realize this is the way. Your passport, bro. Passport. No. There's definitely more to life than staying around and dealing with that nonsense. Got to get somebody somewhere. Go to Columbia. <laughs> this is the way. Come. 